What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about the Proxmox Helper Script WireGuard script once again. So I know we talked about this about a month ago, we did the video setting it up, but it was brought to my attention that T-Tech or any of the collaborators updated the script and they changed some of the features. So we're going to go over the changes and we're going to go over the new dashboard that the WireGuard script uses and how to set it all up. So let's get right into it. First thing we're going to do is look at the changes that were made. So I'm over here on the GitHub. I'm just going to come over to the change log. And then over here, I'm just going to come over here to the WireGuard commit. So over here, you can see in the green is the new stuff and the red is the old stuff. So over here, you can see installing WireGuard using PyVPN was removed. So it was changed that it's no longer using PyVPN to install the WireGuard. It's going to be using a new method going through WG dashboard. WGDSH, so it's using some sort of WireGuard script, and that's how they're going to be installing it now. So they're no longer using PyVPN, which is fine. There's plenty of different ways to install WireGuard, and I'm glad to see that you know they're keeping up with their scripts and updating stuff as we go. So that, those are the changes. If you want to look more into detail, there'll be the link to the GitHub in the description, and you can go check that out. Other than that, we're just going to come back over here and open up the, the helper scripts. I'm just going to search WireGuard. The search bar, I don't know if it was always there, super helpful now because there's so many different categories, you never know where something might be, but I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to copy the WireGuard script. So once again, this script is set to give the container default settings of 512 megabytes of RAM, 4 gigabytes of storage, and 1 vCPU, and it's going to give you the default credentials of admin admin, which is fine with me. These default hardware settings are fine for me because realistically the WireGuard is not going to be using a ton of resources. So half a gig of RAM, four gigs of storage, and a CPU core should be fine for me. If you want to change it, you can change it during the install. It'll give you an option to. Personally, I feel this is fine. It's just running a simple WireGuard server. And if it can run off a Docker machine that's power virtualized, it should be fine. So we're just going to open up a shell on our Proxmox server and then we'll pick this back up. Alright, so we're over here in the Proxmox server, and I'm just going to click on my node. I'm going to right click to open up a shell. So now I can have my shell open, and then we already copied the uh, the bash script, so I'm just going to paste that in here. We're going to click yes, and then it's just going to set up the install. So if you want to change the default hardware, you can do that here. Like I said, I'm going to keep the default settings that they give in the script, so I'm click yes. And now this is just going to begin the sentence, so here we are if we want to use default settings. And now it's just going to start going through the install. So it's going to ask you where you want to store the container. So I'm just going to keep it on the main. If you have multiple um, storage pools on your Proxmox server, this is where you could set to where you want to install it to. We'll click OK. Now it's just going to go through some more of the install. You can see it's creating the container and everything else. So I'm just going to let this install. And we'll be back in a couple of minutes. This process takes maybe three, four minutes. It's not too long. And then once it's all done, we'll be all set. And then after a few minutes, you can see it goes through all the processes and it installs everything. If you get the IPv6 internet not connected, that's okay. That's only if you're using IPv6 in your network. So if you're not, it can't connect. So don't worry about that error. And then you can just scroll down over here and it gives you the page that it's available to access at. So I'm just going to copy that. So this is going to be the IP that WireGuard is going to be running off of. So I'm just going to open up a new tab. We're going to paste that in. And then I'm just going to grab this again. You can see over here it says admin um, pipe admin. So that's just saying that's your username and your password. So you can see over here, if you remember from the last video, the dashboard's already completely different, which is totally cool. It's a whole new setup, and I was messing with this last night. And it's actually a really sick setup that they did, right? So we're going to come over here. We're going to make a username. So I'm just going to put in my name. We're going to make a password. So you can put in whatever you want your password to be. I'm going to click next. This dashboard supports MFA for your VPN to get in and out of your network. This is a totally cool tool to have because you want to be able to make sure that only certain people are be able to access to make the VPN connections to get access back to your network. So definitely important if you want to set this up. If not, no big deal. So I'm just going to skip this for now. But you can come over here and you can use the QR code to generate for like a Google Auth or whatever one you might be using. I'm just going to click, I don't need MFA because I don't need that right now. So after we get all that set up, we can see over here, we are now at the new WG dashboard. So this is the updated version of the script. This is what they changed. So we have a different dashboard to manage our VPNs out of. So just an overview, we have our settings. These would be our configurations for our VPN. 
They gave us a couple tools in this dashboard so we can ping and do a trace route. So this is ways that we could troubleshoot our VPN connections if we are having is any issues. And then you just have sign out. And then over here is how we make our configuration. So we're just gonna come over to settings first. You see there's a light theme, which is way too bright. And then we have our dark theme, which is much better. Um, we can change our DNS. So if you are running DNS in your house, you could set it through here, or you could leave it to Cloudflare or whichever DNS provider you prefer. And then other than that, these are pretty much just some of the basic configurations. Looks like there's API keys. So if you do want to use some sort of API, you can, you can enable that. And then if you didn't do MFA right away, you can enable that later on. So don't worry about that. It's going to show you the directory that WireGuard lives in, which is pretty standard. Over here, we just have the IP that the machine is running off of. So that's going to be default as well. Nothing we're going to want to change there. And then other than that, there's the peer endpoint allowed IPs. Because of this is like the global configuration, I'm not going to change it here, but you'll see in the actual wire guard, like the tunnel configuration will be changed. So don't worry about that. I would just leave all of this default for now. And then as you go on with your wire guard, maybe you'll find different changes you might need. But for the most part, I think this is going to stay default. So don't worry. We're going to go back to the home page, and now we're going to come over here to the right and click configuration. So this is going to be our new actual wire guard tunnels. These aren't going to be the actual clients for the connections. So we're going to be making out like the actual VPN connection. And then out of that, we're going to be making the client. So like the account. So let's say like, this will be my tunnel to get home. And then I'm going to make my account out of it. So it might be a little confusing, but it'll make more sense as we get going. So I'm just going to come over here and we're going to name this ton one. You can name this whatever you're going to name it. Let's say, you know, you work with multiple people, um, different groups. Maybe you want like marketing, engineering, uh, sales, whatever it might be. You can split up the tunnels that way. Or if you want to just do like home, office, I, I don't know, however you want to do it. Or you could just stick with the normal scheme of like ton one, ton two. Other than that, it generates a private key and a public key right away. If you want to regenerate those keys, you can. Now over here is listen port. So since WG dashboard makes it possible to host multiple tunnels off the same machine, we need to set the listen import for it to use, right? So probably a little confusing since we're able to set up multiple tunnels we need to be able to tell it to which port we want this tunnel to listen on so you could set it for whatever port you want i recommend some of the higher ports or you can work with like the default wire guard port if you're going to be hosting one tunnel but for example i'm going to use 1150 over here we're going to set the actual network range that we're going to be using so it gives you an example of a simple 10 network so i'm just going to stick with that so i'm going to do 10 0, 0, 1, and i'm going to do slash 24 realistically i don't need a slash 24 but that's fine and then over here you can see it's telling me that i have 255 available ips we really only have 254 because there's only 254 usable ips in a slash 24 but that's different uh, over here then there's optional settings i'll be honest i don't really know what these are so we're just going to leave them blank you could probably look into it if you wanted to but i'm going to bet that since it's optional they're not necessary so now over here we can click save configuration and now you can see over here we have ton one so I'm just going to come over here and we're going to make a ton two just really quick. So we're going to do ton two. You can see it's different private keys. Okay, so I just all filled in some of the stuff. So remember, I used 1150 on the last tunnel and I used the same subnet, right? So if I go to save, it tells me there's already a configuration used in this port. That's because the box, the, the LXC container running WireGuard is set to listen in on this port internally. So if it has two of them using the same port, it can't listen for two different tunnels. So we just increase it by one. And now we can't use the same subnet again because, right, it's still tunneling out of the same box. So we can't have two subnets run two different tunnels. So you can just change that to two if you want. And now if we hit save configuration, you can see now I have these two one, I have two tunnels. I have ton one, ton two. So now the tunnels are set, but we still don't have our client. So that's what we're going to do right now. So we're just going to click on it. And then over here, we're going to add a peer. Okay, so now we clicked on add peers, and now we're just going to come over here and make the actual config. So this would be the actual WireGuard uh, config file that we would be setting up so somebody could use the VPN. So I'm just going to put in my name, and then over here it has allowed IPs. So this is going to be the IP that WireGuard is going to be using. You can enter an additional IP if you want, but I don't believe you need to, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Over here is allowed endpoint ID, uh, IPs. 
So it does zero 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 slash zero to allow everything. If you want to restrict it to certain things, like let's say you want to restrict it to a certain public IP or certain workstation IPs, you could. However, you might run into issues down the road with connections. So I'm just going to leave this default for now. Other than that, there's a PSK that's blank. That's fine. I'm going to leave the MTUs and the persistent keep alive default as well. So we're just going to click add. And now over here, you can see that I have a config. So by adding this config, it enabled ton one. So now you can see the status is up. There's no traffic passing through because I'm not using the VPN right now. And if you click on the three dots, you can come over here and you can see that there's, you can download the config. There's the QR code if you want to add it to like your wire guard on your phone or however you want to do it. And then you could also link it. So you can get a copy link and you could share it across the network. So this is nice if you're working locally inside your network. Maybe you want to jump over to another machine and you don't want to have to copy it. You can do it that way. So pretty cool. Um, other than that, you can get your edit. There's scheduled jobs. I'm not really sure because I've, I've never seen stuff like this. It looks like you can limit, you know, the amount of traffic through the VPN and you can restrict access. So pretty much you can disable the account for now so they can't use the VPN. So simple stuff and nothing too crazy. Other than that, you know, we have ton two and it's the same process to add another client, right? So it would just be adding the name and you can see it's already set up for the correct IP. So like I said, I'm going to leave pretty much all this stuff default. We're going to click add again. And now you can see over here, I have another account and it's using the different subnet for the different tunnel. So ton one was set with a, a 0.1 IP scheme. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a ton two and ton two has the dot two. So simple stuff. And then now you can see that both of these are working and you can turn them off if you want and you can get rid of them. The only other thing that you need to do is open up the external port for WireGuard. So like I was saying, the only thing left to do is set up the port forwarding so your server can actually get through. So this is the tunnel. This is the config that I set up. So I just download so we see the port. So you can see over here, I set 1150 as my port. So this would be the port you need to forward in your firewall. So it's this or your router, whichever one you use. So it'd be the same thing. So you know how I use 1151 in the other port uh, for the other tunnel. It'd be the same thing. You would have to set both of those to forward through to the machine host and wire guard. So for me, I would forward 1150 through 1151 to 192.168.50215 in my router or your firewall, whichever one you run, whether it's like OpenSense, PFSense, however you do it. You just need to open up these ports so your fire, your VPN can actually connect. After you do that, you should be all set. And then you could have your wire guard working. You could add it to the computers. You could just go download the wire guard client if you're on a machine like a, a physical machine um, so it's just over here and then you can just grab the installation they just have a download you just install it and if you're on your phone if I believe Android has it as well. I know iPhones do you can just download the WireGuard app and then you could just scan that QR code in and you're all set and you have your WireGuard running on your phone so that's just the new updated version of the WireGuard script that is on the Proxmox helper scripts it was brought up a few times. So I figured I'd look into it and do an updated video. And I actually really think that the update they did is really cool. I mean, a lot of new features, the new dashboard they added has a ton of new features in it. So I do think that's way cooler than using like the original WG easy. I think or it was using a, some like an outdated version of the dashboard and all these additional features are really nice, especially if you're running something like a larger environment in your house. Maybe you want like a VPS connection in and out, a simple way to do it. You could have multiple tunnels. So stuff is uh, segmented so you can keep your network secure. But other than that, that's the new WireGuard setup. That's from the helper scripts. And like I said, I have all the links below. Uh, I know there was a handful of people that were commenting or messaging in the Discord server about the update that they did to it. So I just wanted to do a quick update video. Other than that, I will have links to all my gear in my home lab in the description below. I'll have a link to the Discord server. And I do have an Instagram for the channel. It's barmine underscore tech. I've been trying to post some reels there as the week goes on. Just similar to the shorts that you've been seeing on, on YouTube if you've been seeing them. Other than that, if you want to just drop a like, comment, and make sure you're subscribed. It definitely helps the channel out. And I appreciate it greatly. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next video.